Welcome back to Vader Vision. We are jumping right on into the flowering room. First thing we're going to do now that we've gone a few weeks into flower, we're going to go ahead and pump and dump all of the reservoirs. Just going to start off with the first three, the Ninja Fruit and the Malibu. They're starting to look a little light, and I did have these reservoirs running for oh, a week and a half or so before we flipped the flower, so they were running on 18 and 6. So the nutrients have been in there for more than a few weeks, so it's a good time to give them a pump and dump. Generally, I'd wait till about week four or five after we've done our PK boost. But here, we're just going to give them a fresh reset. We are still using Coco, and we are using the Canna lineup as we have been in the past, just to keep things the same. We're also going to start adding in our sweetener, which is our Canna boost in this particular case. Now, we have been topping off the reservoirs along the way, giving them fresh water and nutrients as they've been drinking up the nutrients and water. And also just some evaporation comes from the trays themselves since they're flood and drain. But it is important in the recycle system to reset the entire reservoir every two to four weeks. So that way you can flush out any waste products that they are leaching back out of their root systems into the water table. Now, jumping over here, looking at the Ninja Fruit. They're only a few weeks in, but they're looking great, stacking up well. You see lots of purple coming from that side of those trays. We have the Malibu in the far back right tray, looking good. Plus these two OG trays. Vader on the right and coming over here looking at the Jedi, looking excellent, fantastic, very healthy, very green, so we're going to give them some PK right now, start hitting them, and then in a week I'll give them a pump and dump, but they're looking so good that no need to flip over just yet. Switching gears over to the veg area, we're going to go ahead and continue our periodic pest management. We have had an issue in the past with some white flies, so we're just using spinosad. And we're gonna also add in a little bit of yucca extract so that way we can keep the tips flowing well in the sprayer. And it's also gonna help with absorption. Spinosad is a relatively new insecticide that is made up of two complex organic compounds, spinosin A and spinosin D. These compounds are produced by certain microbes that were first discovered in a soil found at an abandoned rum factory. These compounds can be extracted from bacterium that feeds on fermenting sugarcane. Spinosad is considered a broad spectrum pesticide, but it is only active if ingested or contacted while in a liquid form. So it has little residual effect on most beneficial species. Light itself, especially sunlight, will break down spinosad very quickly. So make sure to spray in the mornings before the sun rises. And if you're indoors, I'd recommend shutting the lights off after you spray everything down. Now, the nice thing about spinosad also is that it does break down quickly. And although it does absorb into the leaves, it won't flow around the plants. So it can be sprayed before you set things into flowering room. It's half-life. It will dissipate far before it ever gets to the harvest point. So it's really great to use in veg, though. It can also, in a recycle system, it'll dissipate so quickly that if some of the excess water and spinosad makes it down into the trays and into the water, it doesn't affect the plants. So that is really nice. I wouldn't build up tons of it, but a little bit getting in there doesn't seem to affect them at all and the plants seem really healthy. So it's a nice thing about the spinosad over something like neem, which can be really detrimental to the root system and they get really unhappy if you spray them too heavy. So that's a nice thing with this. It doesn't control all pests and bugs, but it does control a lot of things from mites all the way to white flies and thrips, very common bugs in the cannabis garden. Now that we've got all those things set and we sprayed everything down, went ahead and moved some of the moms and a few extra things into this extra flowering room tray just to fill it out in the room. Here I've got some alien rift that was a little taller, so we're using these Velcro tie downs against the net. And we've got some Merlot on the left right in the middle and a couple of more Malibu that were really slow, so we'll sex them out and see how they're doing. Jumping back into the veg room now that we've moved some things, we can go ahead and transplant all of our clones that we took. These are the reset of all of the mothers. So we've got a couple of cuts of each. Since we were using the arrow cloner and they have long roots, we're gonna give them a nice deep shaft to use a funnel, nice and easy. And get each of them out and give them a nice transplant and they'll be nice and happy in their new homes. Just gonna gently kind of give a little twist and a bop and lightly pack it down. Gonna mark every single one so we know which mom is which. There we go, and we're all set. And slowly we're just gonna transplant everything over into this extra tray. I also did have to keep the Jawa Pie Mail 
because I don't have a rooted Java Pi male, and we have a Merlot mom already rooted up over on the side, so they're already in bigger containers. But almost all of these are resets, and then we can also see some Alien Rift O side that we're going to be using for another breed room to kick off as soon as one is available. So we got those marching on up. But everything's looking nice and healthy and green. Flipping over to our saved clones. So these are all the clones that we did save from the seedlings that are in the flowering chamber right now. They are getting bigger, so we're gonna strip them of most of their big fan leaves and we're gonna top them all just to slow down the growth. That way they don't get too big and out of control because we do want to save them for at least another eight weeks until we know which phenos we may or may want to keep. So we will be doing a fair amount of bonsaiing over the next eight weeks. I did see a question about where I get the colored tags. Grower's Edge are the color tags I get through my local hydro shop. I think it's through Sun Farm or Hydro Farm. Should be able to find them, the colored marking tags. But they are nice to be able to be able to look right under the garden and see, oh, that's a blue tag, that's the Malibu in that tray, without having to actually read the tag. But not sponsored by any of these products, they're just the products I happen to use. All right, well, this tray is looking fantastic. We got everything bonsai down for now. We'll let everything keep kicking. Did cut down all of the extra mothers that we didn't move into the flower tray, so we went and composted those. And I took the last clones for the next cycle of stuff. We got some Java Pie Dad, Ghost, Cookies, so we can make some more Dark Helmet and Java Kush. Plus, we did take some cuts of the new Vader OG. I'm just marking it as Fader for right now. That's just its plant tag, but it is one of the crazy phenos we found out of the last batch of Vader OG. So I'm excited to run a whole tray of that. So I'm getting some of those prepped up. But for now, the veg room is all reset, nice and healthy. So we'll check back in on that on another episode. Flipping on over to our living soil food web processes. We've got our worm bin here. This is actually a worm in that we showed you guys before. I hadn't actually used one of these in the past. We've always used a traditional worm bin. But it's been working great. Worms are nice and healthy as we can see. And in this one, we just harvest the worm castings out the bottom. When you start getting worms, as we saw there, then you know that you're onto the top layers. So you can put the worms back in or you can leave them in your worm castings and add them right to your pot. In our case, we're just gonna leave them right to the pot. We're also using some Roots Organic Formula 707. It's basically an inert mix. So there's nothing really hot in it. It's just got some bark and cocoa and perlite, so. It's really great for setting a brand new organic mix. We were just using the Root 707 here in a small pot with these girls. We got a Malibu and a Key Lime Pie. And I put them in a Cocoa Tech outer pot just for a little extra air pruning. For each of these pots, I'm going to try and give them a 50-50 mix of the earthworm castings that we've harvested and with this Roots Organic 707. Now there are many different kinds of organic soils you can start with. This is just one that I grabbed at my hydro shop. Once again, we're not sponsored by any of these products, so this is just something that works in this particular system just to be able to kickstart a living soil food web since we don't have a backyard or a farm to kickstart our own compost files. Here we're doing things a little bit differently, and I hadn't worked with Bokashi in a while, so definitely wanted to experiment with that for a little bit. Now before I transplant, I'm not going to rip it all the way out of this Cocoa Tech pot. I'm actually just going to cut holes in the side so the worms can cruise through from the different layers. We're also going to be able to add this mycos. Now mycos, just a note if you are using it, don't just mix it into your cocoa. You do want it to have direct contact with the roots. So here we're just going to kind of peel it back a little bit. They're just starting to hit the outer part of this cocoa tech basket. And I'm also going to drop a little bit on the bottom since some are poking right out the bottom. But we're just here at perfect timing. So hopefully that'll just give them a little bit of a boost, get their roots cooking, get everything running. Now right at the end here, I'm just going to add in a little bit of extra worm castings on top and then we'll still be able to feed it all the way through. Now I'm going to do this with both the Key Lime Pie and the Malibu here. Now these are a little bit smaller. We haven't pushed them up too much and we were just giving them some side lighting so they're doing really well just for sitting in a really light organic mix and just getting some side lighting. So they've been growing nice and healthy so really stoked about that. Now we're going to switch over to our microbial solution we harvest from our Bokashi bucket. So Bokashi is a really cool, great thing. We'll go over it in detail in the future, but basically you're doing a fermenting compost from table scraps, and then you get this nice juice out the bottom, which we're basically making effective microbes here. Now I go ahead and put them in an extra container from an old nutrient container. We're here using a 
old Rizotonic container, but it is actually Bokashi juice. I'm gonna add about 25 milliliters, seems pretty good for about three quarts. Keeps them nice and green, and they seem really happy. Keep the leaves up, reach for the light. So that's been working really well for our particular setup from what we've been running, but it can vary. So if you're running one of these buckets, experiment with yourself and see how your plants react. But for the most part, you can't really overdo it. So you should be okay as long as you stick to decent amounts. But last thing here, I'm just gonna give them a nice soaking since we just transplanted them. And we're gonna put them on a cart and we're gonna wheel them right into the flower room. We're gonna set them right down the middle. That way we can take advantage of the extra space that we're not using. And maybe eventually we'll end up stacking a whole row of things right down the middle. But for now, we're just gonna start with just these two. They're a little bit smaller than normally we'd put something into flower, but they'll still make some excellent little bushes, I'm sure. And we do wanna get them into this cycle right now. I'm gonna fire on these lightsabers running on a light mover right down the middle, as you can see. They're two 600 watt bulbs. We'll give nice little extra side lighting to all of our rows of plants and they'll be perfect to supplement light straight to our organic plants right here in our pots on our cart. Now we're just going to jump right back into our worm in here and we're gonna feed our worms. So worms need food, water, moisture, and some sort of medium like cocoa to cruise through. Here we can see the worms are doing really well, crawling around to kind of move the top over just so you guys can see them, but generally they'll be buried when the lights are on, but if you take a peek at them when the lights are off, you'll see them crawling around even on the top of the medium. Now I'm gonna give them a nice soaking here. We're just using straight reverse osmosis water. In my experience, the worms do not like the tap water and they much prefer the reverse osmosis water and they should be getting all of their minerals and nutrients and everything they need straight from their feeding. Now, since we are at the bottom of this Bokashi bucket, we've been letting it go for a while, we're just gonna dump the rest of the Bokashi material that we have been fermenting for the juices. We're gonna take the excess and we're gonna dump it right on top of the worm bin for some nice, healthy nutrients. And we're gonna layer this pretty well all the way across the top. You can see here, we're just using watermelon rinds, there's avocado seeds, banana peels, just your normal table scraps. Once we've layered all of the excess table scraps down, we're gonna go ahead and add a layer of cocoa on top. The cocoa also has roots in it from old rounds. We did flush everything through properly, so the worms will have no problems cruising on through and eating away at all of the extra roots that are left over and those table scraps. But I will say my review of the worm in so far is excellent. I actually prefer this over a worm bin now that I've started to use one of these. So pretty stoked about this, it was a nice little pickup and it really wasn't even too expensive. So pretty easy to frame up and build and use even though we don't even have a big farm in a backyard. Get away with it in a tight space in a little corner. Now checking out our Pacific Light Concepts light bars. We got three bars over here in one of the breeding chambers. We have all Malibu. They're looking nice and healthy. Starting to put on some frost. Pistols reaching out, looking for that pollen from the male. We did drop a male on in here as well since I found one incredible one. I did keep cuts of him so I have them over in the bedroom. So if we do like all of the progeny that he produces, we will be able to run him again in the future. But overall, he's looking nice and healthy, covered in trichomes and covered in male pollen sacs. He's stacked a lot, so a very interesting male. We'll see how he turns out and how the seeds turn out. Jumping on over to the Vader room. This room, we had tied down a lot of them in the middle. They're looking nice and healthy. They are ready for pollen. The male is just starting to open up some of his sacs. He's cruising a little bit later in flowering. Not quite as fast as the Malibu male, which is to be expected with an OG and an OG selection, just as this. He's got some nice big acorns though. They're hard to tell in the camera angles. He doesn't stack as much, but his pollen sacs themselves are very large and has long bananas. Very long bananas. Very happy with this male though. He looks nice and healthy. We've got a lot of OG traits. If anything, you could just top him up a little bit more and really bush him out because he's a bit of a stretcher. They are cruising along though. So we're gonna flip on over to our OB-1 room. The male has been pulled up and he is far dead. So his pollen is no longer viable. It's all dried up. And he is just a skeleton of his former self. But he actually still looks really pretty, nice and puffy. All the girls look fantastic. Everything is nice and green. Look at those cookies. So frosty, big and bulky, very healthy, especially for seed runs. A lot of seeds, 
A lot of girls end up looking kind of withered at the end. But for that room, it was looking fantastic. This room was also really, really nice. I actually had to step out for a meeting, so I did not film the takedown of the room. But Bubble did take care of that, so thank you, buddy. Did a great job, and everything looks nice and frosty and healthy. So we'll have a nice set of Jawa seeds coming up again soon. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. We'll have another update very soon coming on up. The next upload will be a rating and tasting. We got more Dark Plasma to get through with Ninja. Already got that all set up, so we'll get that uploaded in the next couple of days. As always, remember if you want to help Vader Vision grow, like, comment, and share with your friends. I'll be back again soon enough. But until next time, I'm Vader, and I'll see you later.